Hey guys and welcome back to yet another episode. I am so over the moon with the response from the last video. I keep saying it all the time, but honestly guys, your interaction has been phenomenal. So thank you. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and drop a comment and say hello. It would be nice to get to know you guys and just have you join the community of the Newcastle Street Photography community. Today is going to be a really fun day. If you watched the last vlog or if you missed it, I'll link it up here. So go back and watch it like now. Uh, it's a really good one. I'm re I really enjoyed making it. So today I am meeting up with a local photographer and I'm looking at doing a series based on walking the town of Newcastle with other local photographers. Today is going to be a pretty special one because I'm meeting up with a guy who's incredibly talented at what he does and he has some amazing images and I'll link his image below but first we're gonna go and get some coffee and then we'll do the introductions later. So stay tuned guys and I hope you enjoy this week's vlog. something where there can be a variety of photographers and if they fall into the category like yourself you said earlier today that you wouldn't really class yourself as a photographer so you want to explain a little bit more yeah it's it's pretty much i suppose you know getting my camera and getting back into photography around november last year november 2020 um obviously we're thick in the, the lockdown again yeah, yeah. so you know we're kind of restricted to where you can go so a lot of it was kind of based primarily around living near the coast. I mean, I, I get some amount of abuse for like photographing St. Mary's <laughs> Lighthouse. As I yeah. guarantee there's at least, you know, one a week or so, something like that. But it became like a mainstay because you couldn't go too much further. But then as things have eased and eased, like it's a lockdown, that sort of thing, I've been able to jump into the city, try a few little different things, just get a feel for it without kind of pigeon myself too much too soon because yeah. I think we're the best one in the world to kind of like try and compose something if it looks nice or shoot it but you know yeah exactly. and let's talk about your gear because actually the, the rig that you do is you actually encourage me to go and get one and yes I'm going to play one you can do Money. It's not a bad camera to be fair, so it's the Fuji X100B, this has got the, the square hood on it, uh, not sponsored by the way. Helps keep the light off things once it's a bit harsh, not on a day like today though, because it's incredibly overcast. It's one of those cameras you can kind of, you know, premium kind of quality, lovely colours, straight out the camera. It's really good for like a, a street or an all-round sort of environment without committing to like your five lens in a way My baby out so, now. Uh, Evan has the uh, black version of this. Uh, and and again, I also, we're not sponsored by Fuji. This is just no. coincidental. So I've also got the X100B, and I just love the flat LCD screen. It's very handy when you're doing street photography. Again, like I love this camera purely because not only what I can use, which is phenomenal, but it's you can fit in your pocket. It's well sealed, and providing you with the UV filter. Well, it works in any number of situations, a bit like street landscape, where we've had moments when we've been on shoots before, like shoot throughs and all the rest of it. We're still able to capture everything, with it being 26 megapixels. The resolution is still not yeah. the reason why you crop in. Crystal clear. Me from New 
these are my old Olympus going to this. It's just like, it's amazing. You just, you can zoom in to your crop more and more and the, the clarity of the image is just phenomenal. Like, I mean, I, I, I couldn't be more happier to have a camera like this. So it's well worth the purchase. Again, it's not sponsored, but you know, if you fancy Fuji, you can send us some gear. Okay, moving away from gear, um, let's talk about the whole street photography. Because you said you don't, you wouldn't catch yourself as a street photographer, but a lot of your work falls into the category. And I understand that you shoot what you like, but you've just got a really good eye with like composing an image with subject. Them. You get quite a lot of um, shares throughout a number of local Instagrams like Newcastle Visuals. I'll link everything in the description. Uh, yeah, your work is very popular. Guys, if you're not following him, follow him. Like, I'll, I'll put it below here somewhere. Um, <laughs> but yeah, talk to me about how you find the street photography community. Well, it's, it's nice around here because. Again, I, it's not touched like a, what I'd class as like, it's not, this is not strictly a pro camera, it's not like an SLR kind of wedding shot kind of camera, yeah. but the first, like it's the first serious camera I've probably had for the last 11 years between then. I'd ruined one on a trip to the Sahara, which is a whole other story, <laughs> um, but certainly coming into that, going through Instagram, finding things through the hashtags and finding people who are really supportive and like giving you ideas beyond like the normal. So it's kind of like, yeah, you could be there, like taking yeah, your stereotypical kind of Derek Zoolander pose in front of the, the time bridge and that sort of thing. But then you've also got an amazing array of local talent who are taking yeah. things like, be it like shoot throughs or like yeah. JRC images who are doing things from like the floor upwards. Yeah, it's another one. Great work. Like, if you've seen one of the Millennium Bridge at night, it's honestly you could have pulled that out of the movie Tron the colours and just yeah. like yeah. just absolutely phenomenal put some Daft Punk on and you're like you're there <laughs> right and then you've got other people that's like you know yourself have been very supportive there's yeah. like Ems or like Emily um, yeah she's like, got some great work she did these photographs the most amazing yeah. and there's one that I'm talking to her about at the moment for like a um, like a printout to go on like my, my kitchen wall because there's one she's got there, Sycamore Gap with like the astrology thing, shining a torch yeah. up by the tree, all the stars in it, the colors of the greens are absolutely phenomenal. And it's just one of these where it's kind of like, it's still to this day, like my favorite, like photo that somebody around this area has done. And you get all people like this, that great, incredible work. But from my experience as well, they're still taking the time to come to you, like you'll appreciate bits and pieces or like, you know, like yourself when we were talking about one of the street things is like the other day, like the composition for um, you do a crop it this way, do a hat this way kind of thing. And it's things like that because, you know, technically not a street photographer, but for someone like yourself who's, yeah, yeah. you know, has more of that kind of eye towards that, yeah. you know, you respect the opinions of these people and you know that they can have a positive influence on your work. And that's the thing as well, it doesn't have to be a competition, it just has to be nice, you go out, you take a photo, yeah. someone's learned to need to learn about aperture and you can help them. Yeah. You get a much nicer community vibe and especially with the lockdown, people are wanting to learn more, get to know the ins and outs of the gear and then with the 12th of April coming round when you think, you know what, six years can meet up, go outside, have yourself a, an adult ride beaver or like, you know, something, <laughs> something fizzy, you know, and there's plenty of opportunities to catch up, share photos, nice stories, yeah. learn how other people work, an idea for their ways of shooting because even the way when we met a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and there was ways that we were saying about like the negative space, like things I'd never considered before. And like, that's something I really work on a yeah. lot, like I, uh, for me personally, as, as whoever's watching this and follows me on Instagram, they'll know that I work a lot with my composition of shadow, shape and negative space. I'd just like to touch on what you said about the whole competition thing, because for me, going back when I used to do photography, it was partly one of the reasons why I stopped doing photography, particularly with the whole street photography community, and we'll get onto the, the hashtag NCLS underscore SBC. I personally think as soon as you get like, the arrogance from some photographers, and I'm 
I'm not pointing fingers out at who, who is and isn't because there are people out there and it can put a lot of people off. But I personally think that the, the street photography community that I I am working on is anybody's welcome of all and I, I, I'd just like to get your views on like what, what's been going on lately with the whole hashtag and the community that's been built. Like I say, it's been nothing but positive for me, like from coming into it, even from November, people are saying nice things about me and it can bring it up a notch and yeah. you kind of, even when we're being to carry on. Oh yeah, exactly. The other thing that's quite nice as well is when you've actually found like a nice space and there are people, you've taken it in one way and then there are other people that have taken it from a different perspective and it's really quite nice to see. It's showing you that you've got people working a scene in a different way to say, I've thought about it in that way. If there's like a really particular nice space that people aren't aware of and saying, where is that? I'd like to get that for myself kind of thing. You know, I just happen across a lot of these places, like some of them was just like yourself just saying, have you shot around like near the, the Discovery Museum kind of? Yeah, where we were that today. Sort of yeah. area. It's such a cool spot as well, like you get so much. And I think there's like loads of potential. Summertime it'll be great because you can get people queuing and then people having their like, a bite me, et cetera. Mate, it's, just, it's such a cool spot. Yeah, when I like it. Yeah. The trick was though, it's a good panic for so many lines on there. Just try to get it straight. Yeah. Because it's kind of like you've got the diagonals and you've got your shutters going horizontally. Yeah. Double yellows. And then it feels like the one that I caught with it. But it's a, it's a great shot like and I'm gonna put I'll put it on the vlog so that everyone can see it because it just shows that like it'll give ideas for people to think about your lines and your direction of photograph. What was nice is the fact that you had the subject like where the diagonals were so it drew your eye attention to the subject. Yeah, it just made it even better. Yeah. It's completely, you know. Yeah. God, yeah, yeah, no, I think, like, because you can do, like, you can put on the post either or, like, this or that, and I, I guarantee you a lot of people will say the cross version, but it makes the subject really stand out because of the grey wall. You, you w just walk around this area where the college is, like, Newcastle College has got some great lines, and I, I think it's underrated. Well, the thing I did notice that I was fully unaware of the other day was that about the Discovery Museum. Yeah, mate. Yeah, there's a tank thing. in the middle of town. Yeah, but the, the thing is as well, again, it's such a historical building. It's listed, and it's not photographed enough. People don't shoot around there enough. They, they all tend to flock into the centre of town of down near the quayside. When there's so much more to photograph in Newcastle, so it's a big city. It, I'm not knocking their style, but like I think people just kind of flock into what's the known and don't shift out the unknown. I mean, have a bit of people should come down here more. <laughs> Like, in that kind of context, like a hard back again to like 
couple of weeks ago when we met out, and it was like, you know, like the Newcastle Arms, where it was like the way the shadows were going up the top of there. You were like, you got a great image from that, actually, like, what we put on. But, um, yeah, oh, wow, the layers were phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and you were like, well, something like this, you know, approach it in this subtle way, and you were like, you know, it, it literally felt like it was just point and press. It was like everything was primed up. Yeah ready to like knock out the park yeah. you know didn't really need much more to it it's not just as simple as choose your aperture get your eye so depending on what your weather's doing and that sort yeah. of thing it's like today we're joking on saying that across the afternoon because it's so yeah, gloomy it's so, you know it's like yeah, dull to the northeast you know it's grim up here and like yes there's some times where people make it look effortless Behind the scenes is actually a lot more to it than just yeah. pushing down on the you know the red or the brass button, whatever it may be that you kind of want to encounter with. You know? Again, harkens back to the, the bit we were saying before about getting people in the shop. It helps add another layer of perspective, I think. Yeah. Certainly for when you're like, you know, when you're on the gates head side by the time bridge and you've got that one where it's like four or five windows high and you're just like looking up at this grand scale iconic bit of the northeast and then having this tiny little runner in the bottom of your frame there oh, just shows just the scale of it in its kind of context or yeah, like I love that photograph that, that is actually it was very beautiful like the use of space all the line just the brickwork from that bridge it's just it just sings like if you overthink something and an image can be too busy I mean I like a while back that I, I'm guilty for saying that I posted it because I look at it and think well that, there's just too much going on but sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and then when you realize that all oh, this is a bit busy just simplifying things like it's making something so simple can be so effective yeah I think you do that very well and you've got just a phenomenal style what you do is just great and a good addition to the community of the Newcastle scene. I just think people need to be encouraged to go out and shoot because it's the only way you're going to get better. Like getting yourself involved with this is you can learn it heaps from other people that are like-minded in what you're doing. Yeah. That's the other thing as well is that on Instagram, it's the same with any social media, you're only seeing the polished result. I think the other thing as well is not to be discouraged by if you've shot a hundred frames of the same thing but like from slightly different yeah. angles subject no subject seagull no seagull i mean you might like have an idea like go there's something about this spot i don't know what it is yet yeah. but when you've taken your you've gone like da 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 yeah. and you go back and you're going through your memory card with about 10 copies because you've driven yourself mad looking <laughs> at the variations and then you're like you know what there'll be one that'll stand out you know you'll get a little bit of your post processing on there to just polish it up and then you've got that. This is something that I really want to continue doing because going out and doing meetups with other photographers is, I think, the whole purpose of doing this is showing the community like, the street photography in Newcastle. And I've got a very nice list of people that are very interested in doing it. Being you being the first, first one I've done it with, it's definitely encouraged me to carry on doing it. So I just I'd love to hear everyone's views on it. It'd be great to hear your feedback on it. But today I've really enjoyed shooting with you. Yeah, and like, it's definitely something that I, I want to progress in because as a nice, welcoming, positive and friendly community, then it's, we're doing something right. We're not doing this for, oh, I want so many followers. I'm doing this because it's not been done and people should know about it. It's been good for their mind as well because yeah. it's one of those where it allows it to be truly present because you're thinking about your composition, your setup, even finding that tank today as well. I didn't even know there was a tank in the middle of town. In the centre of Newcastle? Yeah. I mean, go and check it out. It's pretty cool. Like. Yeah. It's just outside the Discovery Museum. It, it, it'll be good to see more people's work just by using the hashtag 
and so many people are using it now. I'm going on looking on it every single day and I'm just like, oh my God, it just, it's just growing so much since we started doing it like eight weeks ago. I'm, I'm getting the point where I think I'm gonna have to make a Instagram page for the community to show everyone's work because it's certainly something, well, I don't know, what do you think about that? It would be lovely to kind of like get a, a collection of those because as you say, the hashtag's kind of growing. Yeah. But like when you're able to like feature people's work, it's really quite nice. It kind of like, it does put a smile on your face it when does, you're kind yeah. of like, you've had like, you mentioned, touched upon earlier, like yeah. you've got like, Newcastle visuals, like things like your Northeast yeah. and Love Northeast England, and various other things. And like, they're all like, great pages, but there's nothing specific for shoot. Yeah. So I think it'd be nice to have that element because that could be like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear everyone's views on that, and if people are interested in doing meet, like just approach us because we're just as friendly as anyone else. When I decided to meet up with you, I just dropped you a message through Instagram. We're all a friendly community, you know, and that's what I want people to know. We're not gonna judge you on how long you've been doing it for. We're not gonna judge you for how good you are because it can be an advantage for a new photographer that has an interest in streets. And if you want to learn something, it's your opportunity. You just gotta come and say hello. I've, I've got some great photographers in mind, some who are a bit camera shy. I just think it's like this needs to be documented. So I encourage anyone that wants to do a walk, to see, let's call the series Walk in the Tune with. I think it will just be great for public to see what we're doing here. Yeah. Well, yeah, and there's more to it than just the, uh, yeah. the one bridge, you know? Exactly, I mean, it's, you, you can only look at that bridge so many times. I mean, like we were saying before, like, there's some amazing shots of that bridge, but, like, it's, it's I, I would challenge, castle, yeah. yeah, I would challenge one of them to take it in a different way that no one's ever seen before, because it has been shot to death. I uh, don't mean that in a negative way, so don't give me any bad, uh, bad vibes, guys. Like, it, it's it's impressive the work that everyone's done. Yeah, it's it's just nice to look at things in a different way. And I'd like to challenge like photographers to go out there and do something that's a bit more different. Even when you set like these um, the challenges within the videos and that sort of thing as well. Yes, and I'll show everyone uh, that's been getting involved. I'll show those pictures at the end. Last week was amazing, like so many people got involved and I'm sorry if I never shared your post, it's not that I didn't like it because it was all amazing and I really encourage you all to keep doing it because... Just buy a coffee, you'll definitely <laughs> put it on now. I'll never say no to a coffee, so... Um, no, but seriously, um, if I put them all on, the video would end up an hour long just from showing everyone's work. But the hashtag's there for a reason, so please go on, go and look at it and everyone's work. And I think I'm definitely going to set up a page to share everyone's work because it, it deserves to be seen by the public. So I would definitely encourage everyone to get involved. Anyway, I think we'll wrap it up there. Yeah. So, um, have you got any, any last things you'd like to say at all? Or? I just keep, uh, keep using the hashtag if there's anything that... Uh, like I say, I don't profess to be uh, anything kind of like crazy or anything like that in terms of my knowledge, but if there's anything I can help with, if there's a location that you like the look of in one of my shots, not sure where it is, just drop me a message or anything like that, you know, very approachable in that sense and, and happy to help, like, you know, we were doing today, like it was going like to you today, like, oh, yeah. I've seen this before, this is actually really nice, but I can't quite get it, see what you reckon to that, yeah. so, you know, happy to help with ideas and that of course, sort of thing, yeah. so, again, whole point of meeting up and that sort of thing, so, don't be a stranger, go out shooting, ask questions, get better. You guys, also, one more thing, one last thing, before I put the end photos, this week's challenge, um, I'm going to let you choose a subject. So for the next challenge, for the hashtag to get on the next film. I think there was one that we were talking about uh, just yesterday when we are kind of arranging this. But one of the ones where you've got your kind of your iconic shot 
Yes. But let's have it in a different way. Yeah. So you can take your iconic shot and then take your more like your, this is thinking outside the box, because you have like that kind of satisfaction of search to go, there's the obvious, yeah. what's underneath? What's li like, what's lying around here? Can I shoot through it? Is there a subject that can enhance my picture? Can I like, you know, if it was autumn, say, like, can I go through a leaf? Can I reflect it? Is it in a puddle? Can yeah. I go through a bottle? You know, yeah. endless possibilities. So yeah. taking your iconic shot, get that one out of your system, and then take your more abstract or your different one there. Honestly, it opens up so many horizons. I would agree. I do the shoot throughs all the time because that's kind of like one of my favorite things just to frame it in a different way. And yeah, you'd be amazed to see what you can find. Like for instance, I tried to go to Northern Rye the other day, but when the queue was 40 people deep, I wasn't having it. So I marched up the hill through Roosburg and I found myself this nice little circular spot. And within it, all the major bridges, the Baltic and the Sage in one, the gloomy background, delicious. Not seen it before. And it just goes to show it can be really serendipitous to be outside where you would normally go to shoot and you've got everything in there, iconic, but in a completely different way. I like that, so iconic but different. Make sure you guys maybe tag it as iconic but different and use the hashtag today after so I know which, which work is what. Um, again, the response from last week was phenomenal. Like, uh, we we done layers and everyone's work has been amazing. You posted one from when we were out um, and that was fantastic. So guys get involved, uh, that's all I have to say. And if you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe and also say hello. Um, we don't bite guys. Um, give Michael a follow. He's got amazing work and thank you so much. And I'll see you next Friday. Cheers guys.